Uh, first things first, my name's Scythe. I'm a lesbian. Um, it was foretold in the ancient prophecies uh, in that I'm a Sunday child, so I'm supposed to be bonny, blithe, good, and gay. Um, <laughs> in, in practice, it's more worked out as average, anxious, filled with seething rage, but I am nailing the last thing. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it is difficult working that out. Um, I will say, I sort of started realising that I wasn't into men at school, where suddenly all the, all the like, lunchtime conversation pivoted around to what boys you liked, and uh, I was just standing at the edge going, uh-huh, men, love them. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly when they have faces <laughs> and an app, multiple apps, even men. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing that really should have clued me into the fact I was playing for the other team was a poster at my local leisure centre. Um, because when I was a teenager, the London Fire Service realised their ranks were a bit sort of lacking in diversity and they should maybe have some women. Um, so they started an ad campaign, which meant that I turned the corner at my local swimming pool and came face to face with a six foot tall billboard showing a female firefighter, and her helmet was off, and uh, her hair was kind of messy, and her uniform was stained with soot, and her arms were fucking ripped. <laughs> no, I know, it was hot. Like, if I'd realised I was a lesbian at this time, it would have been a very exciting time to be in London, because these posters were everywhere. <laughs> uh, as it was, I just stared at the poster for a while, um, and then went, huh. Maybe I should join the fire service. <laughs> uh, like the context, teenage me was not any kind of physical marvel. I looked like the girl that dies of consumption in Act Two of a historical drama. <laughs> like the only use the fire service would have had for me would be laying me at the bottom of a door. As <laughs> um, nevertheless, I considered it. And uh, my mum saw me staring at the poster one time and was like, oh, it's so inspirational, isn't it? It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> inspirational, I feel inspired. <laughs> Six months I walked past that poster going, God bless our troops, and it took another two years to figure out I was gay. <laughs> I did eventually figure it out with a bit, well, a lot of help uh, from Google. Um, because, um, <laughs> you, can, you can ask the internet questions that you can't ask someone in real life. Like, that's the millennial way, isn't it? Like, if you've got a big, important life problem, uh, you could go and ask a trusted friend or a family member. Or you can go to the internet, which is like a big room full of people shouting at each other, all of them deeply wrong in exciting and different ways, and you can ask them what they think. Um, and that sort of difference does mean that, you know, there's, there's a different way of doing things on the internet. On Reddit, you can tell someone you hope they die in a fire. That is good, solid internet etiquette. <laughs> if I did that at work, HR would probably have a chat with me. <laughs> Mainly about why I brought the matches in. <laughs> but the fact the internet functions differently, like I said, means you can ask questions. Um, like, you know, how does a pension actually work? Um, how many avocados is a house worth? <laughs> <laughs> does the woman in Sainsbury's really hate me or is her face just kind of like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went, went to Google and I very timidly typed in how to tell if you're a lesbian. And it turns out that if you're typing that question, then yes, you probably are. <laughs> I did find a test you can take, actually. Uh, it shows you a picture of Kristen Stewart, and if you feel a little fluttery feeling in your chest, you pass. <laughs> Related searches include, um, why are girls so pretty? And do all lesbians have cats? With the answers obviously being, I don't know, but I think they're magic. And, uh, yes, it's compulsory. Anyone found without a cat has their license revoked immediately. <laughs> um, but, you know, 
doing a Google did reassure me. Not because I found loads of useful advice, that was about three blogs, the rest was just pictures of Kate Blanchett. Um, <laughs> but because Google Autocomplete reassures me that however weird I think my questions are, <laughs> someone on the internet is being weirder. Um, look, for context, the autocomplete entries for how to tell if you're a lesbian include how to tell if you're a lightweight, how to tell if you're legally blind, and how to tell if you're leaking amniotic fluid. <laughs> <laughs> the last one apparently happens during pregnancy, so that cemented my decision to never have kids. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, did my googling, had my answer, came out. And I was immediately inundated with messages from men. <laughs> You've got to hand it to them. There is nothing like the confidence of a straight <laughs> <laughs> They can have the sexual magnetism of a damp ham sandwich and still believe that it is their dick that is magic enough to turn me straight. <laughs> One guy told me that I was just gay because I was jealous of men. Uh, have you met men? <laughs> He would describe himself as being like an orgasm and a headache at the same time. <laughs> That's not an advert for yourself, is it? Your date turns up, you have to hand them some ibuprofen and go, you're going to want these before we get started. <laughs> Just, look, I have nothing to be jealous of men for. Apart from, you know, the better pay. <laughs> public safety and clothes with actual pocket. Oh, <laughs> mate, I'm jealous of men. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the fact that I don't date men, I do think means that I have, like, a little bit of trouble understanding my friends' dating lives. Like, one of my friends will be sort of sitting with me and telling me about some awful guy that they're seeing, and, you know, oh, he's terrible, and he said this, and he's done that. And just, my immediate response, dump him. All the time, dump him. <laughs> that is easy for me to say. <laughs> I have opted out of men. I've unsubscribed, and if blocking was a feature in real life, I'd only see about 10% of the male population. That includes both my dad and my hairdresser. <laughs> Brother is a man. <laughs> uh, but I was talking to my sister the other day, and she was saying, oh, this guy's been awful. And it took all of my self restraint not to message him myself and go, dude. Look at who you're dating. She is a goddess <laughs> in that she's vengeful and demands blood sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't handle that, that is your problem. <laughs> like, I just, I, you know, I, I get straight dating is bad, but gay dating, or gating, as nobody has called it, <laughs> exactly any better. Like, no one, for example, um, tells you that it's a lot like finding a job, in that either you get a referral from a friend, or you do it online. <laughs> <laughs> no one tells you about the scarcity problem. There's six lesbians in my town, and four of them are already dating each other. <laughs> like, we have to have a rota system for who needs to be single at any point. And it has been my turn for, I, I think at this point, an unfair amount of time. Uh, like, my dry spell is becoming a drought so severe, watery to consider and guess who um, but, you know, I do have a contingency plan, you'll be pleased to know. Um, I spotted a fire station on the way here, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go. But uh, you guys have been wonderful, thank you very much. <laughs>